G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading an old newspaper report about a bunyip sighting in central Queensland in 1919. So we'll get into it. This was published in Tasmania's World on Monday, 5th of May, 1919. Title, The Bunyip. To the editor of the world. Sir, I was rather surprised on reading the papers to see that Dr. Bottrell confesses to having never seen a bunyip. I really thought that the doctor had seen everything that was worth seeing on this sphere. Well, Mr. Editor, in these days of the skeptic and the unbelievers, if one claims one has seen a bunyip, he is either classed as a derugement or suspected of having partaken liberally of his favourite brand. Having no wish to emulate the great romancer, nor rob him of his laurels, and having a supreme content for the narrow-minded sceptic, I have the courage to claim to have seen a bunyip and have had a baby bunyip in my arms for several minutes. With a mate, I was tramping in central Queensland, between Maytown and Charters Towers. The sun, about 117 degrees in the shade, when we came to a clump of shady bush, in the centre of which was a lovely shady waterhole. The day being so excessively hot, we decided to camp. I soon divested myself of my scanty apparel and dived into the water. I had hardly broken the water when an object swam past me. The water, though black, was very clear, and although I was very much startled, I observed it closely, and thought at the moment it was a young Aboriginal woman, for we had passed several camps of Aborigines in the vicinity. I came to the surface and swam out. I chided my mate for not telling me there were Aborigines about the hole. He asked me what I meant. I told him of the woman swimming past me. He remarked that he thought I had got them bad. The form I had seen appeared to be about four feet in length, with long black hair streaming from its head. Its body also appeared to be covered with short black hair. It seemed to swim with a body movement, and it was quickly out of sight. We stayed at the waterhole two days, but never saw an Aboriginal, which convinced me that I had seen was the fabled Bunyip. My mate had several swims while we stayed by the hole, but nothing in this world would have tempted me in again. The second day after leaving the waterhole, we came upon a camp of Aborigines, about 20 in number, mostly male. I think there were about three women in the party. They were very excited when we came upon them. Finding that one of the Aborigines could speak a little English, having worked for some time on a station, we asked what all the trouble was about. And he told us that one of the party had captured a young bunyip and wanted to take it to the publican in Riverton, about 40 miles distant. But the Aborigines most strongly objected to the bunyip being taken away, as the Aborigines regard the bunyip as something sacred, and to take it away from its natural horns would mean disaster or death to them. With a lot of persuasion, we were allowed to see it, and handle it for a little while. I was keenly interested and observed it very closely. In form, it was about the size of a baby seal, with arms and legs more defined. Its arms were about 18 inches in length, with very human-like hands, the fingers of which were webbed. Its head was supernaturally human, being covered with a long growth of silky black hair about three inches in length. In fact, it looked quite uncanny, and I did not wonder at the Aborigines holding it in such reverence. 
We did not stay to see if it was restored to its natural home, but I believe and severely hope it was. Trusting this may interest some of your readers, have a warm place in their hearts for all Australian fauna. Yours, etc. E. A. Brandon, 55 Hamden Road, May the 2nd. The end. Well, this is incredible what this thing is. Um, so he was swimming in the, in the water hole and he saw the big one and he thought it was a young Aboriginal woman. And he said it was about four feet in length with long back, black hair streaming from its head. And it appeared to be covered in short black hair on its body. And it seemed to swim with a body movement. And then when they got to the tribe and found them and they had the baby bunyip and he had a good look at it, he said it was the size of a baby seal with arm and legs more defined and its arms were about 18 inches in length with very human-like hands and the fingers webbed. But he said its head was supernaturally human and it was covered with long growth of silky black hair about three inches in length. I'd love to know what this guy saw. And I tried looking for the exact location of this and um, Maytown, which is uh, on, is now like Palmer, it's a deserted gold town on the Palmer in uh, North Queensland and Charters Towers. It was somewhere in between there and they said Riverton and I looked and I spent way too long looking to find this Riverton town and I can't find it. So if anyone knows where Riverton is, I'd be really interested to know where it is. Okay, that's it from me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.